Good morning, friends and fellow traders. This is Doug Campbell with Right Way Options, and this is the morning market preparation video for March 4th, 2019. So we're entering our first full week of trading here in March, and the bulls are happy this morning. On Sunday afternoon, we had a uh, we had a report from the Wall Street Journal came out that um, stated that the U.S. and China are drawing close to completing um, a trade deal. Unfortunately, the story gave us no date as to when that deal might be completed and honestly had little to no details of what might be included in the deal. Um, nonetheless, what happened is markets around the world have responded bullishly to that story. And so we truly have this morning that by the rumor gap uh, going on where we assume that there is a deal coming sometime in the near future with some kind of detail in that agreement. But that's all we know. And the markets are responding bullishly to that. So first off this morning, we have the diamonds, as you can see, diamonds gapping up this morning right here. There's our morning gap right up here, holding above that 260 level here and still below this price resistance up here. So here we are once again, trying to power through and show signs of bullishness here this morning and break those resistance levels, even though it really is still on just a rumor of of a potential trade deal so kind of watch that this morning now trends are still up we had a nice hold of support here um, but remember um, also remember we want to avoid chasing into that morning gap I mentioned this on Friday I'm going to mention this again that morning gap we want to wait and see if actual buyers step in to support this gap or we end up getting caught in that pop and drop type pattern. So this morning, if we get kind of something similar, if we gap up and don't see follow through buying there, we could easily see those sellers take over, pushing it back down. So remember, don't get caught up in the fear of missing out. Wait and see. Is there going, going to be proof that those buyers um, are going to step in supporting that? And we, we've all seen what that looks like. We get something like this in the morning. Whoops, there we go. We pop up in the morning, a little bit of pullback, a little bit of consolidation, and then buyers stepping up in here. Notice that that really didn't play out by the end of the day. But we all see these gaps and we just wait for that entry into that trade. And then we get to follow on through. If we chase first thing in the morning, if we get all wrapped up in the news, um, what ends up happening is we end up catching that pop and drop and end up being really disappointed on the day. Um, like uh, folks were on Friday. Currently, futures are up about 84 points. We're looking pretty solid this morning. Everything's looking pretty good, as you can see, trying to gap up toward that high that we had on Friday. Um, not quite there yet, but really, really close on the Dow, trying to gap up toward that Friday high um, in, in, um, in the price action. So let's take a look. Uh, trend is still good. Resistance levels, we've already looked at that. Let's take a look at the SPY. SPY, very similar situation. Um, SPY actually trying to make it above Friday's pop and pushing up into this resistance area right here. So we have this triple top resistance right here that we have to keep an eye on. And once again, we're pushing up there, attempting to snap through that and prove that we can get on through through that resistance and maybe attack these all-time highs in the market. Not exactly sure when you look at the economic data that we should be attacking the all-time highs in the market, but nonetheless, we could do it just on this enthusiasm about um, this possible trade deal. Let's, uh, and trend is still up here. Everything is looking good. Just watch that price resistance up there. If we happen to get another one of those pop and drop patterns, just watch it close. Let's take a look at the Qs. QQQ looking pretty darn good here. Qs popping up this morning, running up here to attack. Um, these resistance levels this morning. So you can see there's uh, these price resistance levels in here. We've held in here a support, trying to move on up and attack those levels on this news this morning. Um, once again, as we approach those resistance levels, watch those and respect them for that possibility that sellers could be there. Let's take a look at um, 
IWM. IWM really ended in one of the strongest indexes on Friday. It actually ended in a positive note on Friday, moving up. And as you can see, once again, I'm trying to push up here and attack these resistance levels. So watch IWM closely. Looking pretty darn good here. Got to admit, it's trying to hold up pretty well. Trend is up. We just want to watch those resistance levels in that chart. Let's take a look at the VIX here real quick. VIX uh, tried to move up just a little bit on Friday, but then those bulls came right back in, defending those levels, and that fear pushed back down into this area. Keep note that we do have a little bit of a price support. You can see these highs right in through here. We do have a little bit of price support right in here on this level. If we were to happen to break down, then we're getting clear back down here into uh, those levels um, that were extreme lows um, in 2017 so if we can reach back down in there it's just showing that there's no fear in the market for some reason no one believes that the market can can reverse or fall right now that everything is good just based on um, this potential trade deal with China that certainly improves things earnings have been good but I just I'm not really getting the correlation how um, things are as good this year as the they were in 2017, particularly when we're starting to see um, faltering retail sales, faltering home prices. Um, I'm not, I'm not quite picking up on the same vibe here, vibe here that the market is. But yeah, I can certainly be out of sync with the market, and um, I'm not trying to suggest that the market must fall or has to fall. It does not have to do anything, and often doesn't do exactly what I want it to do. As, as you know, we we can't predict what the market is going to do. All we can do is react to what the market is actually doing, and we can see that fear is dropping out of this market and continuing to stay low. Let's take a look at T21, 22. This one, I'll, I'll admit, is being the most baffling to me. T21, 22, how long we stayed up here in this reversal zone. And now this morning, once again, we're trying to gap up toward that area. So watch that. Um, we're still up here uh, pretty high, but we have opened up this room. We have plenty of room now to move back up, and we could even squeeze some of those short traders out, creating a, even a bigger rally. But we still have a significant uh, room to move to the downside here, so we'll want to keep an eye on that. Any rally up into here, we get back up here in this bearish reversal zone. We have to be a little bit careful of those re price resistance levels up there. So keep an eye on that. Let's take a look at our economic calendar for today. If we take a look at our economic calendar, um, today we really don't have a whole lot going on. We do have construction spending here at 10 that could move the market around a little bit and some bill auctions and stuff but other than that nothing to move it around but I want you to take note we do have some big reports um, this week new home sales that created a falter in the market a couple weeks ago where we had those new home sales decline we have international trade we have jobless claims coming in here um, this week and then probably the biggest number of the week is going to be the employment situation number so kind of keep that in mind um, as we approach that employment situation number it's not uncommon for the market to kind of get a little choppy and light in its volume until that number comes out. So just watch that as we move through the week toward that number. Some big reports, some big things going on this week. We also have a pretty big week on the earnings calendar, um, over 500 companies reporting. So that certainly can move us around quite a bit, assuming that those reports continue to come out relatively strong and we don't have any major disappointments in the market. So with that, everyone, hey, I want to wish you all a fantastic day and I want to wish you great profits. If this is the first time you've seen these videos, please do me a favor. Click that subscribe button on YouTube. Click those thumbs up buttons. Um, 
Also, leave a comment if you can. I truly appreciate uh, you folks who, who take the time to just leave even just the briefest of comments because it helps those algorithms show these videos to more folks. And I do appreciate that. So if you can, click those thumbs up buttons and just you know leave a brief comment or, or say whatever you feel about this. Also, um, please do me a favor and um, share these videos with any friends and family. You can pick up this video and, and and just share that link on Facebook, Twitter, any places, any place with friends and family. And also you can share it um, from the Facebook post that I make as well. So please make sure if you can to share those videos. That also helps a lot. So with that, hey, let's take a look at um, some charts that could be setting up and trades that you might want to be paying attention to uh, for your watch list on uh, this week ahead. Now, remember, everything that I show you here is just an idea for your watch list. It's not a trade recommendation in any way, shape, or form. So kind of keep that in mind as, as you look at these charts. First off, um, I'm going to mention EA. Now, EA, pretty interesting chart. We had a bad earnings report. And as you can see, that bad earnings report, we moved um, sharply lower, but that was completely rejected by buyers. We pushed up strongly after that earnings report. Um, uh, buyers didn't agree, I guess, with um, what the initial reaction was on that earnings report. But now the great, what's really nice about this chart is what's happened is we've kind of settled down. Notice our price action has become much more concise here. We're not leaping around. And what we're doing is we're moving over toward this trend, just kind of sliding over toward that trend. Now, I will tell you right now that this trend, I don't know um, exactly where this trend is going to be. Okay, this trend could be um, anywhere in here. I've just got this marked right now, kind of keeping an eye on this. This could certainly um, be a little bit flatter or whatever in here, but we'll want to watch this nice little price action in here. And as you can see, I've placed an alert right here. If I get a buy in here, I might be looking at picking up some EA because certainly the buyers want to see this move higher, at least at the moment. So keep an eye on that. One of the defensive companies I've been keeping an eye on, this is one of those consumer defensive sector stocks, is MDLZ. And you can see MDLZ, um, alert after alert after alert, moving up here, looking pretty good. And I've placed this next alert in here. You can see that we've kind of slid to the sideways over here, hold um, right around where that current trend is. Now, keep in mind that that trend could still flatten out more. After such a big run up, it's not uncommon to see a stock consolidate or go sideways a little bit longer um, than what that trend shows. But what I love about this chart is that we're pulling back and notice how these uh, price candles in here were holding that support. No one wants to seem, no one seems to want to sell this stock below this level at this point. And so I placed an, uh, an alert right over the top of those little spinning top candles waiting for um, some kind of clue that we might pop up out of here and start moving on up again. So watching that one closely, MDLZ should be on your list uh, for something to pay attention to. Um, Altria, um, Mo here has been looking really, really good. Um, we made really nice money on this in, in RWO. Um, some members anyway. I didn't. I didn't buy it, uh, but I mentioned it to everyone. And um, uh, a lot of RWO members made nice money on um, Altria in this move. And now as we're approaching this resistance level, notice how our price action has become very concise, very, um, a very small spinning top uh, type candles. And we're just kind of sliding over toward this trend. Anywhere in here, I would be watching some kind um, uh, of a buy signal for an entry if that pops through that resistance we could move right on up here to this next level um, in the chart so kind of keep an eye on that um, also um, take a look at uh, GLUU GLUU if you're looking for a short trade this might be a place to look now GLUU failed up here at its high as you can see and we have this 
uptrend um, in here and you could draw this um, much differently than what I've drawn this you can see I try to catch as many touches to a trend line as I can if you prefer you could certainly pull this down into here and that gives you a very different picture but when I when I get all these touches to this trend and I see this failure here unable to break through breaking the downtrend and then this rally back. What I want to watch in this rally back is any kind of a failure that occurs as we move back toward this resistance level of the trend and that price resistance right in here. If I were to get some kind of a failure pattern here where I show signs of um, sellers stepping into this trade just leaving a little bit of a failure then I would be looking to maybe place a short trade on this with a stop loss just above and see if I could capture that next move down into this price support level on glue so just a couple charts to look at a few things there's lots of charts out there that could be setting up lots of good places to look for those charts but just a few for your watch list today hopefully you'll find those helpful so with that everyone hey have an awesome awesome day I wish you great profits and if you are struggling out there as a trader please remember you know you don't have to trade every day to be successful as a matter of fact um, I often find uh, that less is more um, when I stop pushing so hard when I stop um, rushing and chasing in the stocks my uh, my uh, P&L grows um, uh, oftentimes again um, being more picky about the trades you take um, slowing down is a good method to increase your profits so if you're struggling out there don't feel bad if you just feel like you need to take a little bit of time and refocus yourself um, into those proper stocks rather than just rushing into everything and if you're struggling if you're having a real tough time just remember don't give up on yourself um, just pull back a little bit do a little bit more practicing paper trade maybe a little bit practice a little bit get your confidence Get your feet back under you um, before you reapply yourself to the market and just keep up the hard work because believe me it's worth it it is truly worth it everyone take care have an awesome day i wish you all the best and i'll talk to you all bright and early tuesday morning have a great week